In today's video, we are going to be talking about Coulomb's law of electrostatics. Okay, we also have a poem on the board which we are going to be attempting after we are done with the laws and the explanations that comes with electrostatics. But first of all, what is electrostatics? Looking at the name, electrostatics talks about um, two things, electro and then static. Static simply means something that twists, and electro comes from the word electricity, or electricity comes from electro okay something like an abbreviation so um electrostatics simply deals with the study of electrical charges as well that's what it does okay and then there are um a few laws that are important to take note of in electrostatics of which the first and one of the most important laws is um the fact that unlike charges are charged and like charges repel okay generally we have two types of charges which are the positive and negative charges so we have to charge we have a plus and we have a minus okay since they are unlike charges they have um different signs they are carriers of different signs or the magnitude are different it simply means they are going to attract okay they are going to attract and the force of attraction depends on the magnitude and the distance between the two charges okay and then for like charges that the charges that are having the same symbols okay for like charges they are going to repair they drift away from each other okay that's what happens so for um like charges they do us now repair and unlike charges are charged now that is one of the most basic and important laws in electrostatics okay and it's worth um noting okay now like i said we're going to be talking about Coulomb's law of electrostatics and that is what we're going to be dealing fully on okay now what does this law say whenever any of these two charge or um any of these two they are attracting or they are repairing if they are attracting they are moving towards each other and there is a force of attraction if they are repelling, they are drifting away from each other and then there is a force of repulsion so whenever these two charges are attracted to each other or whenever they are repelling there is a force of attraction okay or a force of repulsion now this force is what Coulomb's law is talking about okay he is now saying that the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is directly proportional that is it varies as the product of the charges increases okay or the product of the magnitude of the charges increases rather and then it also varies as the inverse of the square of the distances um, between any of these charges okay so if for example the distance between these two charges we're going to call this arrow and then the magnitude of this charge is q1 the magnitude of the other charge is q2 that is the value of the charge Coulomb's law is saying that the force of attraction varies directly as the product of the charges okay the magnitude of the charges to be precise okay when i say magnitude simply means we need the value we don't care to know if it is positive or negative that is it okay we don't want to know and then inversely as the square of their distance apart okay now you can see that this mass mass is a basic mass of course um we're going to be evolving some variation inside of this okay and since we're having um the very symbol what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a constant okay and eliminate this guy so that gives us f is equal to k times q1 times q2 okay divided by the square of the distance apart so this is what coulomb's law is talking about it's saying that the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges they could be like or unlike charges okay varies directly as the product of the magnitude of the charges and inversely as the square of their distances apart now this is just an introduction or a basic to um, solving problems on electrostatics and it's very very quite important um, in electrostatics okay now let's talk more about this formula we're having here this value k what does it do what is the value and what does it represent now it is worth noting that the value k represents or has the formula okay based on the um fact that charges are spherical okay when you look at them not like you can see them but um, um assumptions have shown that they are spherical okay based on the fact that they are spherical we can work with um solving or creating a value for the value of k okay or a formula for getting the value of k at various levels which i'm still going to talk about and this is giving us one over four pi e n now uh, most students or most persons will make mistakes by writing the value of as k as one over four pi e naught of which e naught talks about air or free space that is the mistake most students make 
okay now I, I want you to take note that this is the actual formula they make a mistake in that aspect due to the fact that they consider the fact that all questions or all problems given to you are as a result of the charges placed in um, in free space okay hence we'll be having e naught here now this e naught is called the permittivity of the medium okay i'm going to write it here em means permittivity means permittivity of the medium okay now this medium could be anything whether it's um free space or um in water in oil in any medium at all where the charges are being placed in okay that is what em represents and of course remember in um, um in physical in the science world most times we want to take measurements of these mediums with respect to another one just the same way we have what we call um, relative density um, um relative velocity and so on and so forth even the refractive index depending on the medium we're having okay now similarly the medium we're having here can also be measured with reference to another one okay of which we call it the relative um permittivity the relative permittivity is written as e or epsilon rather the subscript of r is equal to the permittivity of the medium divided by the permittivity of free space okay now these are just um subscripts they all represent permittivity of which this one is relative okay this one is relative this one is for free space or vacuum okay and this one talks about the medium which could be anything okay including this one as well okay that's what it means so if we're having um the relation given above can be used to work now tackle problems depending on the medium you're given now for a to be precise this e naught has its, um, a specific value, okay? It is a constant and it is given as 8.854 times 10 to the power of minus, minus 12. This is the fixed value for e naught, okay? K also has a value, okay? But it depends on the medium, of which if the medium is A, K is going to have a value which I'm going to write on the board as well, okay? Now, the value of K, I'm going to take this off. Now the value of k in this case, okay, then becomes one over four pi. Now in this case, we need the permittivity of the medium, and the medium is then a. So if I substitute e m for a, I'm going to have um permittivity with a subscript of o. Okay, that's permittivity of free space. Okay, so rather I'm going to come here and write one over four pi. You know that's what I'm going to write. Okay, or I could as well make EM subject formula. If I do make this one a subject, I'm going to have EM is equal to relative permittivity times relative permittivity of free space, of which for A of free space, the relative permittivity is always equal to 1. So we can then say EM equals E naught and then substitute into this case, of which you then get a value of 1 over 4 pi times E naught, which was already given, is 8.854 times 10 to the power of minus 12 okay that's the value and we'll work with that we're going to get the value of k as 9 times 10 to the power of 9 okay approximately 9 times 10 to the power of 9 uh mutant meter squared per column squared that is the unit okay for k so you can see now that k has a value okay now it is also important to take note of how charges interact okay how charges interact with each other it is important because when you are giving some questions on um when you're asked to calculate the force of attraction or repulsion between the charges and you can't tell the charges that are in that um in that condition or given to you you might find it difficult to solve problems and sometimes you might have to calculate this force or any of these charges for you to find the value of the charge if it is positive or negative given to you okay now I'm going to talk a little bit about that for positive charges do take note that they have what we call electric flux which are imaginary lines around them okay and for positive charges they are directed radially outward of the charge okay that's for positive charge and then for um a negative charge the charges are directed radially inward okay by convention there is no proof that they are directed inward or outward but by convention we all agree that for negative to be directed inward 
and then for positive it will be directed outward now imagine we are having a positive charge a case like this okay on a straight line let's say we're having a positive charge it is important to know how the um, charge is going to behave when another charge is placed close to it okay imagine we place another positive charge at this point what happens is that this charge tends to drift away okay depending on its magnitude okay but um, whether this one is smaller or bigger we assume that this one is being pushed away or that one is being pushed away so there's a relative moment between each of them um, therefore means that we could say that any of them is moving away okay so we can say that this charge is what now drifting towards the left hand side because of the positive charge or we can say this one is also what now drifting towards the right hand side because of this what now positive charge now if this were to be negative if this were to be negative this one is going to drift towards the side okay because they are what now unlike charges and from our first law we did say that unlike charges are going to attract okay now this one is going to pull this other charge with a particular force and that force f is what we just what now prove the formula for calculating f is equal to k times k1 times k2 divided by the square of their distances apart okay now let's say we are um, having a third charge for example we're having a third charge a positive charge here and then you're asked what is the net force that is acting on this positive charge what is the net force that is acting on this positive charge let's say from here to here we have a distance r1 and then from here to here we have a distance um okay r2 r2 and then from here to here we have a distance i would say what is going to happen how are we going to find the net force now there is something called superposition of a force okay and that is what i'm about to talk about there is a formula for calculating it is simply taking the vector sum of the net forces we're having here so if for example you have to find the net force on this one the net force then becomes the sum of the individual force that is felt due to any of the other charge so if the force fails by um, this positive charge due to this second one okay let me call it q1 and q2 if the force fails by this is f1 i'm going to have f1 yeah plus the force felt by this one and this one if it is f2 for example or f3 let's call it f3 okay it's going to be plus f3 we do not consider the, the force experienced by this one and this one we don't do it okay um, i've seen situations whereby students attempt problem like that they, they try to consider the force that is experienced between these two charge okay but you have no business with this absolutely no business okay what you need since we are considering this charge the force we need is the force that is experienced due to this first one as well as the force experienced due to the second one so what you need is to take the algebraic or vector sum of these two so even if i'm having a plus here you could have a minus in the sense that okay let's say we're having a plus here and a minus here okay well we want to um, know the force that is experienced on this one due to this okay we we'll notice that this force is going to uh, move towards the positive direction okay towards the right hand side that is an attractive force so we're going to have a plus one okay now this one is positive this one is positive since they are both positive what happens is that this one is the one we're dealing with okay we well, assume that it's both now the one drifting away but we don't care about this magnitude in this case we're talking about the direction okay in terms of um, um, the direction to assign the sign into the force what we do is what now you ignore the magnitude so even if this is two and this is ten we're assuming that this one is the one pushing this one away because this guy is expressing a force due to that third charge so what will happen is this one is going to experience a negative force of f3 in the what now left hand side hence this becomes what now a negative force that is what happens so it is important to know how to analyze charges like this and know how to um, solve problems like this okay now i have a problem on the board which says what is the magnitude of the columbic force between two point charges okay q1 which is minus 2.00 microcoulomb and um, Q2, which is positive 3.50 uh, microcoulomb, separated from each other by a distance of 15 centimeter in air. Now, you're told that is, um, that's, um, um, everything that took place was in air, okay, which I explained earlier on. Since it's in air, we're going to consider um, permittivity of free space, which is E0, okay? For that reason, we are going to consider that formula, hence, to solve for it, to make it of the formula F is equal to KQ1 Q2 Remember, I are taking the magnitude times the square of the distances apart, okay? Now, permittivity in the free space So K will have a value of 9 times 10 to the power of 9 You don't have to stress yourself So that becomes 
9 times 10 to the power of 9 okay times what is the magnitude of q1 we're giving q1 it's minus 2 times 10 to the power of minus 6 you should know micro here represents 10 to the power of minus 6 so we'll have our uh, minus 2 times 10 to the power of minus 6 that's q1 okay multiply by q2 which is plus 3.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 so we'll have um uh, plus 3.5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 okay divided by the square of the distance apart take note the distance should be in meter okay that's the uh, SI unit so 15 centimeters in meter is 15 divided by 100 and that should give you um, one, so that's 0 0.15 so we have 0 0.15 square okay 0 0.15 square that's the um, um, the distance apart in meters so when we do the maths, remember the magnitude simply means we are ignoring any negative sign. So the magnitude of minus two times ten to the power of minus six is just two times ten to the power of minus six. Okay, it is important you work with the correct formula. Most persons put um neglect the formula; they just put the regular brackets, and then they start having negative, positive sign, telling it is what attractive or repulsive. But that is not what we are considering now. We can just simply tell if they are attractive or repulsive by following the first law of electrostatics. Okay, the columns not there cannot tell if it is attractive or repulsive. Okay, don't make that mistake, or it will affect you in some certain problems. Okay, what you should do is just analyze and solve for the force directly, getting a, an answer, and then we cannot consider the charges to see if they are attractive or repulsive. Now, when you do the math for this, um, I have the value here you're going to get. So you're going to get a value of 2.8 newtons as a force. So this is going to give us. 2.8 newtons as the force or force attraction or repulsion okay but which of them is it now consider the charge you're having a minus and a plus a positive and a negative charge now from the laws of attraction or repulsion or that column um, gave us is that if they are like charges they're going to do what now um repel okay that is for similar charges and if they are unlike charges they're going to do what now attract so we can say this is positive and negative this means these two charges when they are placed in a close um, distance from each, uh, from each other, they are going to what now drift towards each other. That is, they move closer. Okay, that is what happens. So for this case, they ask us what is the nature of the force. It means it is an attractive force. So I'm going to come here and I'll write an attractive force. Okay. So they have an attractive force of 2.8 newtons between the charges, and it is that easy. Now, there will be more problems to um, solve on the electrostatics, which we are going to do in our next video. And in our future videos, there will be a few videos concerning electrostatics. Solving problems that will help you gain understanding and help and um, um, get a clearer view of everything that is being talked about or treated in electrostatics. So stay tuned, click on the notification bell and do it to subscribe so that when a new video is being uploaded, you'll be one of the first few persons that gain notified and you can continue learning as always. See you in our next video.